everybody, welcome once again to Christ Our Light Scripture and Reflection. Today is February 10th, 2022, and it's one day later after the date of my <laughs> first date with Mary Beth, and I was in googly eyes. Heaven. <laughs> Today we celebrate the Feast of Saint Scholastica. And she was the sister, possibly the twin, of Saint Benedict. I don't know if many people know that. And the uh, college in Duluth is named after her. Our own daughter attended that college. She did. She did. And uh, I attended St. John's Benedictine School. This is true. Yes, That's it is. True. Let's begin with prayer. As we celebrate anew the memorial of the Virgin Saint Scholastica, we pray, O oh Lord, that following her example, we may serve you with more pure love and happily receive what comes from loving you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Solomon was old, his wives had turned his heart to strange gods, and his heart was not entirely with the Lord his God, as the heart of his father David had been. By adoring Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the idol of the Ammonites, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not follow him unreservedly, as his father David had done. Solomon then built a high place to Chemosh, the idol of Moab, and to Molech, the idol of the Ammonites, on the hill opposite Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. The Lord, therefore, became angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. For though the Lord had forbidden him this very act of following strange gods, Solomon had not obeyed him. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is what you want, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I enjoined on you, I will deprive you of the kingdom and give it. I will not do this during your lifetime, however, for the sake of your father David. It is your son whom I will deprive. Nor will I take away the whole kingdom. I will leave your son one tribe for the sake of my servant David and of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. The word of the Lord. The response Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit us with your saving help. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. But they mingled with the nations and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare for them. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons, and the Lord grew angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Alleluia, alleluia. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your soul. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went to the district of Pilate. He entered a house and wanted no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. And he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, despite Jesus' seemingly insensitive response, 
to the Syrophoenician's request for her daughter, the woman knows who she is before God, not a dog, but as a beloved child of God. And she humbly but firmly makes that clear to Jesus. And Jesus honors that faith in God's love by curing her daughter, the demon that was afflicting her. When we first hear of Jesus' initial response to this non-Jewish woman, it sounds demeaning. But don't we often take the attitude of my children and me come first? Me and my fellow Americans come first. Me and my church come first. Me and those who agree with me come first. Me and my people come first. Me and my needs come first. I mean, we'll happily agree to give our scraps to others, but there's seldom much left for them, is there? Today's gospel is a call to expand our vision beyond the labels and traits that make others second in our concern and realize that every human being, regardless of race, color, religion, gender, are first children of God. Let us pray. Transform our hearts, O Lord, to recognize your goodness in those we ignore or forget or diminish. Help us to put aside the labels we are too quick to assign on one another, but instead honor and respect them for the dignity that is theirs by being your sons and daughters in this life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.